This is still 2.6, but we're going to now start talking about the piecewise defined functions. And one of the problems in your homework doesn't ask you necessarily to graph it just yet. It just wants you to find values first, and then they'll ask you to graph it in another question. Okay, so I wanted to do an extra part here where we had some practice with finding those values. Um, so for the first one, if we do this here, for the first one we have um, f of x equals this function when x is less than 1, and then the function equals this when x is greater than or equal to 1. So when they're asking me to find f of negative 1, these are my x values, and I need to figure out which section does that x value live in. So I ask myself, is my negative 1 less than 1? Or is my negative 1 greater than or equal to positive 1? And in our case, for this particular x value, our x value is less than 1, which means this is the function I should be using when trying to evaluate f of negative 1. So f of negative 1 should be 2 times negative 1 plus 4, which turns out to be a positive 2. So that's the answer for f of negative 1. Now for f of 0, now my x value is 0. So is 0 less than 1 or 0 greater than or equal to 1? In this case, or well, in all cases, 0 is less than 1. So I should be using this function again when evaluating f of 0. And I get 4. Now f of 1. This one's the hardest one because you see the value 1 here in both. So is 1 less than 1 or is 1 greater than or equal to 1? 1 is actually equal to 1. So it fits this description because it says it could be greater or it could be equal, right? And in our case, 1 is equal to 1. So this is the function I have to use for f of 1. And I get 3. Then finally, the last value, f of 2. Now my x value is 2, and 2 is greater than 1, so it does fit this bottom function. So when I'm evaluating f of 2, I have to plug it into the bottom function. And I should be replacing the x with 2 since the x is now 2. And then here I get the value 2. So those are all the answers for evaluating this piecewise function. So you take a look at what's inside the parentheses, that's your x value, you figure out which interval, um, which region that that x value will fit, and then you use the corresponding function to plug it into. Okay. Now, to graph it, it's a little bit um, interesting. So what we have to do is we have to do two charts. We're going to do one chart for y equal to 2x plus 4, and we're going to do another chart for y equals 4 minus x. Now, what we have to do is make sure that we use the, that we pick the appropriate x values for each func for each uh, table. Not only that is we have to pay attention to what happens at one, okay? Because I have to use one in both of my charts because that's where the graph breaks. But I have to remember that with this one that doesn't have the bar is going to have an open dot, and the one that does have the bar is going to have a solid dot, okay? Everything else just has normal, regular dots, okay? But here, you have to have a, a little bit um, exaggerated open dot and a big, and an exaggerated solid dot. Um, now, for this one, I have to pick x values that are less than 1, so like 0 and negative 1. Here, I have to pick values that are greater than 1, since I've already picked 1. I would pick 2 and 3. And then what you're doing is you're plugging each of these values into the function. 
So when I plug in one into this function, I will get six. When I plug in um, zero into this function, I will get four. And when I plug in two, negative one into this function, I'll get negative two plus four, which is two. When I plug one into this function, I will get four minus one, which is three, four minus two, which is two, and four minus three, which is one. Now I'm gonna plot everything on this graph and then just basically connect the dots, okay? So I have one and six. It's gonna be an exaggerated open dot there. Zero and four, a regular dot. Negative one and two, a regular dot. Now remember, this is going for all x values less than one. So it's this x value here and all the x values less than it. So even though these are the only dots I have, there should be an arrow on this graph. Now, let's go on to the next one. So here we have a point at 1, 3. So it's going to be an exaggerated solid dot. Then 2, 2. It's a normal dot. And then 3, 1. We've got a normal dot. And the same thing goes here. This is for all x values greater than 1. So here's 1. It's for all these x values, which means even though those are the only numbers I plotted, there should be an arrow to indicate this is going to the right forever. Okay? And that's what the piecewise function looks like. Now, that's not enough, so we definitely have some more examples to, to talk about. Okay. So here we have another one. Notice this one has a square now. It's okay, they can change the functions all they want. That just um, affects how we eliminate the numbers. But we're still gonna make two charts. One of them's gonna be for y equals negative x minus two. The other one is gonna be for y equals x squared minus two. Zero is the cutoff, so I have to include zero here. This one has the bar now, so that's the one that's going to have the exaggerated solid dot. This one does not have a bar, so it's going to be the one that has the exaggerated open dot. Now, here I have to pick x values that are less than 0, so negative 1, negative 2. And here I have to pick x values that are greater than 0, so 1 and 2, positive. So when I plug in 0, I get negative 0, which is just 0, minus 2, I get negative 2. Negative of a negative 1 is positive 1, minus 2 is negative 1. Negative of a negative 2 is positive 2, minus 2 gives me 0. Now we go over here, 0 squared is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. So I just evaluated this. You could use your calculator if you need to compute each one of these. That's okay. Just remember, whenever you plug something in, the x basically becomes um, open parentheses, and then you're plugging the 0 in there, and then you're plugging the negative 1 in there, and then you're plugging the negative 2 in there. The same thing for the square. Um, the x becomes basically an open parentheses, and then you're plugging in the 0, plugging in the 1, plugging in the 2. Okay. Whenever you plug something in, that's literally what you do. You replace the x with an open parentheses, and then you stick in whatever you're supposed to plug in. Um, so let's go ahead and plot these. So we have 0 and negative 2, and it's going to have an exaggerated solid dot. Then negative 1 and 1 will have a regular dot. And then negative 2 and 0 will also have a regular dot. This is for all values less than 0. That means everything to the left, which means this have to have an arrow at the end. Now over here, we're going to do 0 and negative 2. Now, this is interesting because I would be putting an open dot here, but there's already a solid dot there. So guess what happens? My open dot gets filled up with the solid dot. Then we're going to do 1 and negative 1, which is here, and then 2 and 2. Now remember, this is where that information about the basic graphs comes in handy. 
x would just be a straight line, right? Like a ruler, straight line. x squared, though, is curvy. So when I'm drawing this, don't try to make it straight. It should be curvy a little bit. And this is for all values greater than zero, so you do have to kind of go a little bit extra and put that little arrow. So it's completely straight on the left-hand side, but like a little curvy on the right-hand side. Now, last one I saw in the examples, it wasn't anything like this, um, this greatest integer thing. We don't do that. Um, but I did see that you had like a three-piece piecewise function. So I definitely wanted to use this paper to try to graph a three piece. Like how does that work and what does that look like, right? Um, so basically what you have is you're going to have three charts. And then you got to figure out what the ends are going to look like, okay? So here it says my x values are going to be between negative six and one. And since these are the values here, I definitely have to use them in my chart. I have to, okay? This one has a bar, which means there will be an exaggerated solid dot. This one has a, a no bar, which means it will be an open dot. And then I can pick one value between, in between negative six and one, I'm just gonna choose zero because I like to plug in zeros. And that is in fact in between negative six and one. If you wanted, you could pick another x value, like negative 2. You don't have to, but you could. Um, for here, I'm going to use negative 1. And I think I made a mistake. I think this actually has to be negative 1, not positive 1. It doesn't make sense if it's positive 1. I think that was an error of when I typed it in. So... Because of that error, this should be a negative one. And then I have to pick a value in between negative six and negative one. I'm just gonna go kind of in the middle and pick negative three. Now for the next equation, I'm looking at the middle here, okay? I'm looking at this part. I have to use the negative one at the top and I have to use the zero at the bottom. And you should be able to pick a number in between, but in between them, I think the only thing I can pick is like negative a half. It's more for visual purpose, not necessarily um, something I got to plot on the graph. So here, this one has a bar, so this is going to have an exaggerated solid dot. That one does not, so it's going to have the little open dot, right? Now we move on to this section, so I'm looking at the bottom. I have to use zero and I have to use two. What's in between? A one. Here, I have to use a solid dot. And here I have to use the solid dot. Now notice that it's not going all the way like x is just less than this. I do stop at negative 6. And then x is um, greater than, or yeah, x is less than 2, so it is going to stop at 2. So this one doesn't have any arrows, okay? But let's go ahead and draw it. Um, so if I plug in negative 6 in here, I'm actually going to get. Um, negative 30 which is huge I can't even graph that but it's okay um, when I plug in negative 3 I'm gonna get negative 15 and when I plug in negative 1 I'm going to get um, negative 5 so negative 1 and negative 5 is here with an open dot negative 3 and negative 15 is gonna be down here with the regular dot and then negative six and 30 is gonna be like really far down, but it'll be a solid dot, okay? And so then this should make a line. Now, I can't draw probably because I drew my dot in the wrong spot. Only because I don't have the graphing paper that's going all the way down to 30, right? But essentially what you should see on your graph is here's the negative five and then here's the negative 30 and it's going downward like this okay and so if you see that part and in the location that it needs to be that's the one that you're going to select on the computer now for the middle section we have negative one well look there's nothing to plug an x in 
So it doesn't matter what the x value is, the y value is always going to be negative 5. Which means here's negative 1, negative 5, but now I'm filling up this hole with a solid dot. And then negative 0.5 and negative 5, and then negative, or 0 and negative 0.5, and that one's got an open dot. So there is like a little tiny line. I know you can't see it. Let me draw it over here. Here's a solid, or no, I'm sorry. They filled in this dot, and then they drew an open dot over there. So there is a little tiny line in between. It's just this graph paper is really, really tiny, so you can't see that. And then now let's do the last one. So if I plug in 0 into here, I get 0 minus 5, negative 5. If I do... Um, Oh no, I graphed that wrong. No, I didn't. I did it correctly. This should have an open dot. Negative 5, 1 squared is 1, minus 5 is negative 4. 3 squared is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. So notice that this is an open dot from where we left off. But now, at that same point, I'm going to fill it in with a solid dot. And then 1 and negative 4 is a regular point. And then 2 and negative 1 is an exaggerated solid dot. Now remember that this thing, this one's a square, it should be curvy. So it's going to be curving like that. Okay. And again, um, you can't tell because this is a really tiny graph paper. But the graph should be doing something like this. Okay, and so that's what the graph looks like. Oh, and this one got filled in, right? It was open here, but then it was open here, but then got filled in right there. So this is what the graph will look like. It doesn't have any arrows. It just has a solid dot on the left at negative 6. It has a solid dot over here at 2 and over here at negative 1. Okay. And at 0. So that's the end of that. So I just wanted to show you that even though there's three pieces, it works all exactly the same. Um, that's the end of this video.